Whipple had a wonderful time speaking with his goat, Rekas Lol. He covered so many cultural habits from him and I would never have gotten this far without the opportunity to learn from him. Then he says, take me back. And this dumbass says, you abandoned Europe but they needed you most when ring chasing with T1, you know better than Kevin Durant. This has to be a joke. Like, this is just straight up a joke, right? There's nobody, no way somebody took this serious. Because, like, ring chasing and LCK challenger? <laughs> what does that have to do with anything, bro? And abandoned? My man got back and benched mid-season. So, this is probably like some dumbass, uh, like, troll account. Nevertheless, this to me was not news. This to me is not news, but I guess... The meta is to, to react to it anyway. There was a drama between Martin and G2, right? Because G2 during Ocelot, during Ocelot times, uh, basically they had the most ruthless, brutal contracts you've ever heard of. If you got benched, you didn't get paid. And then basically, if you didn't re-sign a contract when you had one year contract left, you would get benched. This happened to Mickey. This happened to uh, Wunder. This happened to uh, Reckless 2, where he didn't get paid shit. And um, they also made sure that under no circumstances I would go, would I go to another LC team for egoistic reasons. This, this is new to me. This is new. I wonder if this is a case of, uh, I wonder if this is a case of Fnatic again. Could be that this is just Fnatic again, right? A Fnatic blocker, because Perks had the Fnatic block too, which for competition is mega horrible, right? Like, if LEC was the only thing to win, then I would understand this more, but there is so much more to win than, than LEC, right? Uh, KC saved me and also did everything they could to help me get back to the LEC. They did, like KC, I remember the buyout, and I remember that KC were willing to let him go uh, in a very simple manner. And even though like they won one split and didn't do so hot in summer, they had no hard feelings. I have no hard feelings towards KC either, because at least, you know, when they benched me, they did it early on. And if I wanted to, I could have coasted on two-year contract. Uh, but that's not how I operate, right? So... And KC, it is what it is. Removing buy if I agree to not receive half of my salary for that year, which uh, I think is very fair, right? Very, very fair. Fnatic then, I in turn, decided to bench me after four months of my two-year contract, trying to get me out after a few weeks already, failing to do so at an earlier time. So, the detail that was kind of fucked up about this one was that uh, basically... I remember when Reckless signed, there was basically, he basically like asked us like, yo, is, is there a chance that Ops is going to play? Because I know Ops is really fucking good. And if I'm joining a team and Ops is on bench and that's going to hang over me, that's not going to be the case, right? Uh, and um, basically, um, he was promised that's not going to be the case, yada yada. Uh, there was speculation that that was going to happen. <laughs> Uh, winter and spring, like there was, there was a situation, but then eventually, upset of course, went to Vitality that year, and and everything kind of played out because they had no one in June. And uh, nevertheless, T1 saved me once again. They really did, because after Reckless getting benched in Fnatic, there was no team big enough and with a big enough brand that can utilize the popularity of someone like Reckless, and at the same time, give him. Um, the opportunity to grow in the support role uh, because when it comes to playing like the biggest orcs in Europe and North America are also the most competitive ones and at the time in terms of the equilibrium of, of value and in terms of fandom it really really was imbalanced for Reckless because Reckless did not have like he, he did not play well in winter or spring right he didn't play well in winter or spring. So his market value was way lower than his powerful, you know, media presence. Because Reckless is still one of the most famous players out of Europe ever, right? And one of the most beloved players out of Europe ever for many, many good reasons. And T1, this was the only move that made sense. 
And keep in mind, the, the GM of T1 was the same, the same GM that hired me. The GM of Sambo was Becker, and uh, he Becker moved over to T1, and he hired Reckless too. Uh, so Becker is Becker is a is, is is a genius, man. I think this is a very very good move, you know, for both parties because they can actually utilize how how known and and and, and gorgeous Reckless is, you know. Uh, so so there's that, you know, gives him opportunity to grow and uh, gives him opportunity to 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 build up his, his super foundation and to, to reinvent himself because this was the position Reckless was in. I don't think there was any other team that made sense, literally in any other team. So this was like a really, really good move. Uh, support me during a continuous tough period of my life, but also help me as much as they can to make sure 2025 is a good situation for me. The villains were, are within the region I abandoned. Well, I think... I'm going to make a comprehensive video. Kato says Mickey X was insane on Excel. Yeah, he made that team. He made that team good. <laughs> that team was nothing without Mickey. That team was nothing without Mickey, bro. They took us to five games. They almost beat us when I was in Fnatic. That team was that team was a joke before that, in my opinion. Um, but here. I think this is a very, very crucial detail as to why our region suffers. Why is it that... Why is it that everyone that leaves Fnatic and G2 does it in such a bad way? Look at all the players that have gotten out of G2 and... Uh, at least in, in the times before the current era of G2, right? Post-Roma G2, like, like pre... Pre Roma G2, right? Everyone that left G2 I was like, fuck G2. <laughs> I don't think. Um, basically, post Roma G2, like in my mind, I think it's basically when the flaked Yankos Targamas roster happened, I think that is like the beginning of a, of a new leaf for G2. Right? At least I didn't see anything that was uh, bad coming out of the camp post that era. But also, it's like if you look at everyone that leaves Fnatic, they also did it with with this, with a similar vitriol, you know. What what I'm saying, right? What I'm saying is. If if you are if you are in a position right where um, I'm saying those strong relationships are supposed to be your future. You get me? Those strong relationships are supposed to be your future. Those are supposed to be like those those players that have gone along the way and are a part of your DNA. They're supposed to be your future in the sense that they're supposed to be your coaches. This is supposed to be like you're supposed to nurture the legends of the game to become more. I can even speak on my end, right? For me to be like fuck esports, I'm done with it after giving 13 years of, of my life into it. That, that, that to me is sad because there was a lot of players along the way that I worked with that I was like, yo, this, this guy could make a good coach. This is somebody that I could raise up. And this is somebody that I can uh, go further with, you know? But now we are here. Now we are here. Neon also replies, could be worse. You could have been benched by the teammates sitting next to you. You could see flaming on this corner on the screen next to it. How is this worse? No joke, but I couldn't care about this. So a, a teammate of yours doesn't like, like, who cares? No, like, no offense, but who the fuck cares? How is this? How is this a fucking... How is this even uh, remotely close? This is, who cares? I really couldn't care. I don't care. Like, sure, your, your teammate mistreated you. Your teammate was was a bad teammate. Uh, that's it. 
We're going to list off every story of you, you having a bad teammate. There's nothing to do with your benching. 